Welcome back to What Are Tea Nibs with General Disturbance. This is the GSOR 1008, the General Staff Operational Requirement 1008, one of four vehicles designed for the role. This is version number one or scheme one. I'll tell you more about it in a while. This one is a tier eight British tank destroyer on the south spawn of Lakeville under the command of Chosen Dark and Reborn. Now this vehicle has a 105mm L7A1 gun which is pretty powerful. It's a full shot autoloader, 320 alpha, 226 penetration with the standard rounds, with the premium rounds, it'll go through 321. So it's got very good pen with premium ammo, not so good pen with the standard rounds, but um, they're still useful. Okay, waiting for some enemy to turn up. Well, what can I tell you about this tank? Well, designed in the 1960s, between 1961 and 1963, uh, the British uh, government, or the general staff rather, put out a requirement for a tank destroyer, and it was to have a 105mm gun, and it was supposed to be very low profile, be able to take on the enemy with an autoloader. And they came up with four ideas, and this is the one that's actually in the game, and there is a video about this if you want to watch that. Uh, it's on the Armored Archives channel, I'll give a link in the description below. Anyway, this particular vehicle um, was discontinued after the blueprints, and one dummy vehicle was actually put forward. It was probably the least complicated of all the types that they actually designed, because basically it was supposed to have just a two-man crew, the driver or the and the commander and basically they were to um, supposed to have uh, either of them capable of operating the 105 millimeter gun now it's actually gotten uh, a very unusual feature for these sort of vehicles it's got uh, fuel armor at the front of the vehicle what I mean by that is that the they put a special fuel tank right at the front of the vehicle there's fairly heavy armor there as well but the the idea was that most of the enemy tanks at the time were firing heat rounds or arm piercing and if a heat round hit the front of the vehicle it would penetrate through the armor with the hot gases but the density of the fuel would stop it from going off explosively it's diesel fuel so it could absorb the the heat and the energy and it actually gave or made the armor on the front of the vehicle over 700 millimeters in thickness which made it pretty difficult to actually take this tank down with a heat round of course if it was hit with an armor piercing it had equal difficulty in actually getting through the armor first target conqueror Nice shot, right through the lower plates. Second one didn't pen. Third one did. And Conqueror's a one shot. Oh, and he got him! <laughs> He's got his first kill. Nice one. Now, I said it's a two-man crew in the designs. In actual fact, in the game, there's a three-man crew. They've given it an extra one, a gunner, to the commander. Some of the other designs are shown, and in actual fact, what they did is they had a kind of bustle at the rear which contained the ammo. The driver and the gunner was supposed to be, uh, or the driver and the commander, was supposed to be in the front part next to the gun, and there was an autoloader which would actually put the shells into the breach. Further shells were actually carried down below in the actual hull, uh, just behind the fuel tank and they could be loaded into the bustle when they needed to, but they only carried a small number of shells actually in the uh, bustle itself at any one time. Now it does have good gun depression, it's got 11 degrees of gun depression in the game, which is quite good, and 10 degrees of gun elevation, that's a bit of a problem, it's not as much as you would like. And I think Chosen Darks decided that he's not getting a lot of sh stuff to shoot at from his current position, and he thinks the enemy is coming in from the town, he's right because unfortunately uh, the guys in the town didn't stand up very well. We're three tanks down. We swapped with the FE3805, which is probably a good idea, because now we can cover the lake road, and it's a T55A on the lake road. And of course, if the enemy comes directly from the town, we've got them too. Oh dear. 
just lost one of our SU-130PMs and the RT, the enemy RT, or one of them, hit the other one. So we're three tanks down on the enemy at the moment, with the enemy about to come to sight. The one bad thing about this tank is I'm afraid the reload, stock reload or standard reload is 44.05 seconds. I think Chosen Dark's managed to reduce that a fair bit, but it's still very, very long. So you're left um, waiting an awful long time for uh, a new set of shells to go in the breach. But it does have decent penetration with those rounds, so you can do decent damage to the enemy. BK! Oh, wrong angle! And he went for the... Uh, he's firing standard AP, went for the side of the turret, hoping it would go through, but it bounced on the wrong angle. I think he wanted to get that Capola if he could. Tiger's a one-shot. He's going to hold off on the reload because otherwise that might give the enemy a big chance. Oh, the E50's made it through, but he can auto wing on and pump two rounds into that guy. Makes him a one shot, but he did take a round there that penetrated from the Tiger 2. Whilst he was up, now he's in forced reload, so he has to pull back. Now, although it does have, or supposedly does have the fuel armour at the front of the vehicle, They've, Wargaming only made the turret 152.4mm, the front of the vehicle 96.9 So it still has reasonable armour, but it's just that long reload. The rest of the vehicle doesn't have very good armour at all. The sides and the rear, well obviously, as you'd expect, because you can penetrate the rear of a tortoise very easily. But what makes this thing great is the uh, reloader. Uh, not the reload, the uh, the fact that it's an autoload and four shots can do a lot of damage to the enemy. Okay, we've got a tortoise on the way, so we're going to need to hit that uh, capola at the back, the uh, loader's capola. Oh, we don't need to. The FB3805 made short work of him. And now he's going back behind the rock. Oh, RT inbound. Yeah. It wasn't aimed at us, it was aimed at the FP3805. Whoever was capping is still capping, but we can't hear the cap because obviously we've been deafened by the noise of the explosion. That's one of the good features that I think they brought in when they uh, brought that into the game. V VK, three shots please. You can see how good the penetration is. Yeah, VK's gone. And those were standard ammo. Now, let's get rid of that Tiger once and for all, because he's hit us too many times. That's good. So, it's three kills now for Chosen Dark. He's still got one round. I popped the reload. Yeah, he has. We're going to get a few more RC rounds. He's got to 2,600 hit points of damage. But I'm afraid there's only... Um, well, there's still five on his team, and there's only four on the enemy team. Yeah, they've actually been quite ha happily hammered. And it's mostly by Chosen Dark, really, more than anything. Okay, who's it going to go for next? The other thing about this vehicle, which I like, is the top speed. It's very, very fast. 60 kilometers an hour. That's almost as fast as some light tanks and medium tanks, for that matter. So you can redeploy around the battlefield very, very quickly. And some of the designs that they put forward, the scheme, the various schemes, as they call it, four of them, um, we're actually very low tanks, very flat, so very difficult for the enemy to spot, and that's, I think, one of the reasons why they gave this vehicle very good camo indeed. Can only Jagdpanzer keeps popping up. As far as we can tell, three of the enemy are in the valley, and... There's only one RT left in the game on the enemy team, the M53, M55. Technically, we do have the advantage, but the enemy has more hit points than us, twice as many. He's loaded four rounds of APCR this time. I think he senses the need to actually have a bit more oomph behind his shots. We haven't heard from the Scorpion G and the T-55A for a while, and I'm wondering, have they come down the lake road in the meanwhile? Yes, they did! And look at that, it's actually from the town. The T-55A's been spotted. He didn't aim that one in the sniper mode. 
and looks like the T55A got away with it. Uh, try not to stay too far up. The, he's not getting his gun on target straight away, but the T55A is hiding in the dip. Very difficult to get a shot on him. And oh, no, the enemy RT just killed our RT. So now it's equal numbers. T55A's moved up. He's just behind the house. This is very difficult because we're the only ones holding the T55A from coming further. The Scorpion has been seen at the back of the map. Considering the number of hit points on that T55A, I'd be very inclined to go down there and try and deal with him. But the thing is, our team only has 481 hit points left, and most of that we've chosen Dark. His teammates have virtually nothing left. That can only Jagdpanzer and Scorpion G took most of it off them. And now they've just got a pittance apiece. He's pulled back just to see because our guys had to pull back. No, no! The M53, M55 just took out the objects at 704. And I think Chosen Dark needs to push forward to just to keep that eye on that T55A. Oh, no, the Scorpion G's coming in. And he goes down to one shot from our SU 130PM, who was on the ball, ready and waiting. And the T55A is going for him, and he got him. Yeah, that's a bit afraid that Chosen Dark wasn't watching the T-55A and he chose that moment and now Chosen Dark's all on his own against the T-55A who now has the initiative because he can go around the other side and we're playing chasey chasey kissy kissy bangy bangy and there he is all two aimed on one shot to kill him but we've just taken a round from the Kanoni Jagdpanzer and we're in reload. Oh, no, now we're in reload. He did have one shell left. He's making the Kanoni Jagdpanzer chase him. He is a one shot. Five hit points left. The enemy arty could take him out if he knows where to put the shell. I'm afraid the Kanoni can't see him anymore. I think the M53, M55 is probably relocating to get out into the field so we can actually lob a shell in Chosen Dark's direction. I would. I'd be moving east as quickly as possible to get to a decent position. Okay, we've got four shells, but we can't see the target. We can only guess where he is, and we're going to have to go in. And the chances are the enemy RT is going to get a, a shot at us. And the Kanoni and Jagdpanzers decided, oh, well, he came out of the cap and then went back in again. I think he's trying to lure us in. I would go in, though. And there he is. Oh, this is the Arty. Oh, nice shot, Ghost and Dark. I know he killed an Arty, but he did get it right and he didn't get spotted. But it means that the Kanoni and Jagdpanzer is still in the cap. Now, how is he going to handle this? Is he going to go lakeside and get close in the ground depression? That would you allow him to use his gun depression, 11 degrees of it. So long as he can get close, the... The Jagdpanzer... It's a Canonian Jagdpanzer, I should say. Wouldn't see him until he got really, really, really close. And only then the top of the turret will poke up along this uh, ridgeline. I go in now. That's it. You got the bushes in your favour. There he is! Oh, okay, right. Now we know now where he is, and the Canonian Jagdpanzer did see him. And he's now hiding behind the VK. No, we just have to drive in. If he's hiding like that, all you can do is drive in. There's no shot for you to get. You can only hit that box on the top of his gun, and I don't think that's in the hitbox. You just have to drive in. Keep your eye on the gun. Get ready. Manually aim it. He's doing that. Forcing the Kanoni Jagdpanzer out. Oh, so close. Go for it, go for it, go for it. Oh, he's forcing him out. Oh, one shot in. Go for the kill. He did go for the kill. He got the kill. But, oh no, he was too late. They, 
They capped out whilst he was going ring around the roses. What a tragedy. Well, it's extremely rare for this to happen that the enemy team won, even though every member of their team was wiped out and only one member of your team was still alive, but you were still defeated because the enemy capped out and he managed to kill the enemy tank during that grace period just after they finished the cap, which means they won the game. And even so, uh, killing him did not give his team the, the, the win. Chosen Dart lost this one. But he did get a first-class tanker, and it's the first time he's had a first-class tanker in the GSOR 1008. He got his first mark of excellence as well. <laughs> Shows he's consistent. And he got a duelist for taking down two enemy tanks that damaged him in the game, as well as a fire for effect. And because that was the sixth kill, he ended up with a top gun as well. And his win eight from the battle was 5,265. It was just a crying shame that he lost the game, that he killed the last enemy. But it was too late. He capped out. In fact, congratulations should go to the Canonian Yank Planser because he did play Ring Around the Roses in such a way as he did not leave the cap at any time, even though he was using the VK for cover. And he knew that he had to go around because otherwise Chosen Dart would get around into his rear. But uh, I'm afraid he couldn't stop Chosen Dart from getting at least one round in. And he managed to stay alive long enough for the cap to complete. And before Chosen Dark could reload, it's a 4.79. Uh, 4 no, not 4.79. It's a two-second inch clip reload. But that was long enough for him to cap out. And even though he got killed, he still won. So <laughs> I think he, congratulations to him on that one. Let's have a look at the team score. Well, the highest damage in the game actually went to the Emil 2 on Chosen Dark's team. He got 5,912 hit points of damage, picked up the high caliber. The second highest damage was Chosen Dark, who was still alive, got a top gun, and he got 3,257 hit points. And the third highest damage was that SU-130PM who got 2,924, but got taken out from behind by the T-55A. Our FV-3805 got a confederate. The T-55A on the enemy team also got a confederate. And that Canonian Yank Panzer got an invader medal because he capped out, but... Unfortunately, he didn't survive. Well, fortunately for Chosen Dart, but unfortunately for us, he was in the cap long enough to get the win. So let's have a look at kills. Yep, Chosen Dart got that one. Six kills to him, four kills to the Emil 2, four kills to the Tortoise, and then two kills the SU 130 PM, the T 55A, the M53, M55 on the enemy team. And when it came to base XP, Yep, it's the enemy team. The T-55A got 1,081. Uh, the Emil 2 got 918, beating all the other members of the winning team. And after that, it was the Tortoise with 879. And their VK-101P got 787 with Chosen Dark following up behind, uh, which puts him in fifth place overall with uh, 784. Chosen Dark fired 18 rounds in that game, got 14 direct hits and 13 penetrations. Damage of 3,257 hit points, of which 954 were at more than 300 metres. I suspect that one of those shots was the shot that he fired at the M53, M55, because it was a very long way away. Six hits received from the enemy, four penetrated, two non-penetrated, and one hit by way of splash. Yes, he... Uh, he did actually uh, accidentally receive, be on the receiving end of some splash when the shell was aimed at the FB3805. Uh, the penetrating shots, well, I did say the armor's fairly thin. And so, yes, anything that hits the vehicle is more than likely going to go through. 640 hit points of damage blocked by armor. One enemy vehicle spotted. Seven enemy vehicles damaged. Six killed. 105 hit points of damage assistance. And he got 47 defense points when he reset the cap. I think that was the T55A actually was capping at the time. 81,809 credits on a premium count. 10,800 for courageous resistance. That's because he got a Battle Hero medal, the Top Gun, in a losing or drawn game. 92,609 credits altogether. And after repair, ammunition, respawn, consumables. And yes, he did buy a premium ammo, but he, I think he needed to. 28,639 credits profit. He got 25 bonds for the achievement. 1,176 XP, 691 for courageous resistance, 187 for this being a premium vehicle, and took away 2,054 experience points altogether. I thought that was a pretty darn good game. In fact, 
that's the sort of game that I would always like to see on someone like Jingle's channel or uh, Klaus's or Quickie Babies because it's a sort of uh, twist in the tale that, yes, you kill all the enemy tanks, you were the last man standing, but you lost the game <laughs> because the enemy managed to gap out. It's a heartbreak game, it really is, but well done to Chosen Dart for getting his first mark of excellence at the very least and, of course, getting that Top Gun. I hope you enjoyed that replay. If you did, please give this video a like. Do subscribe to our channel. Leave a little comment down below because it feeds the algorithm. And then hang out at home watching TV. <laughs> <laughs> and do remember that I've left a link to uh, the Armored Archive website, which is a really good website. I recommend anyone to subscribe to that channel because uh, in France's who does that single-handedly, has been culling through the archives at the Tank Museum, finding really interesting pieces of information and putting together videos which are so educational. They're really, really important videos because they teach you so much about the vehicles in this game and some of the more unusual ones that uh, we do come across. Yes, he was the first person to cover the Manticore and the GSOR long before they actually came into the game. So uh, if you want to learn all the details about British tanks and some of the other odd tanks in the game, you can actually uh, get a lot from his channel, so please do subscribe, and I'll leave a link to the video about the GSOR, and I'm sure you'll pay a visit to it to, to have a look, and I, I found it fascinating. Thanks for watching.